Hello, this is Sherry and Beverly with Aging Backwards. Today Hi. we are talking everything quarantine 15 related. So have you been wearing your pajamas every day? And did you put them on and all of a sudden now they are a little tighter. <laughs> so we are going to go over who we are first. So here is our title page, Aging Backwards with Sherry and Beverly. I am Sherry, a culinary nutrition expert and educator at Sherry Lynn Inc. My program is a step-by-step -step method to empower exhausted, busy people who suffer from ongoing cravings and stress and want to lose weight without giving up all of their favorite foods. Beverly? Hello, everyone. I'm Beverly. I am a certified health and wellness coach. My company is Beverly Hills Health and Wellness Coaching. I have coached clients who have lost up to 50 pounds in less than one year. I offer a variety of programs online, individually, group, and one-on-one, -on -one, just working with me. Uh, I'm here to help you on your health and wellness goals, and my tagline is Stepping into Dazzling Health. Look forward to connecting with you on your goals for health and wellness. I love that, Stepping into Dazzling Health. Thank you. All right, and we, of course, have to start out by telling you our disclaimer. Absolutely, because we are not medical doctors, although we have our areas of specializations and we have our certifications and nutritional components to that, but I am going to share this in its, in its entirety. This is a disclaimer for Sherry and I. This information is for educational and informational purposes only and solely as a self-help tool for your use only. We're not providing medical, psychological, or nutritional therapy advice. You should not, not use this information to diagnose or treat any health problems or illnesses without consulting your own medical professional practitioner. Always seek the advice of your own medical practitioner and or mental health provider about your specific health situations. For the disclaimer in its entirety, there's a link provided that you can look at the entire scope of our lack of being held responsible for acting outside of your doctor's um, requests. Yes, absolutely. So we are talking today about quarantine 15. So do you need a little reinforcement for your healthy habits in the wake of social distancing and the coronavirus pandemic? Now, some of us have been at home a lot longer than others, and depending on if you have been working or not, I know I'm still working, but from the house. I know, Beverly, you're working full-time from the house, and I've been babysitting quite often for the essential workers in my family for a two-year-old, which keeps me busy. So how have um, you been doing at home, Beverly, with your work schedule? Well, I'd like to quantify the 15 number. Um, I have a heavy background in finances and numbers. I always have to tie them to something. So the quarantine 15 has come about as a topic of reference for people who have been going through this social distancing which was set in like mid-march 2020 and currently as we're doing this june is like tomorrow i think it is so it's several months of cocooning at home and if you have been in college or have young children who graduated high school and moved off to college then there is something that's called the freshman 15. And this is when you go off to college, you spend a couple of semesters there, you come back home to see family, and they're looking at you like, oh my God, what happened to you? So the mm -hmm. 15 is the weight, it's the pounds that you have put on. So that freshman 15 has fast forwarded to the day into the quarantine 15. So have you found yourself putting on some extra pounds. 15 is like a number that people realize like one day, oh my God, when I check my weight, I'm 10 to 15 pounds heavier. And Sherry, I have to totally admit, as conscientious as I am, I work out practically every day. I eat relatively well, 
Um, you know me, I'm more of a intermittent fasting lifestyle. Um, I have not had the ability to move around as much throughout the day because I am working at home. My day starts pretty early. I get my workout in, try to do some journaling, um, meditation, and I sit down to work and I'm literally sitting for eight, 10, sometimes 12 hours and I have to force myself to get up. And I think that that's where I've noticed it's coming from. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like for people who are outside of the health and wellness scope and have no idea mm -hmm. of conscientiously preparing for this time. Um, as we go through our um, PowerPoint slide, we talk about scheduling. So I do mm -hmm. have a pretty scheduled life right now, but the, the sedentary um, working has 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 showed up i mean i'm a couple of pounds mm -hmm. heavier and it's like it's not a huge thing but i'm a petite person and a couple of pounds makes a big difference for me but the bigger problem is if you don't identify the couple of pounds and acknowledge it and make some shifts around that all of a sudden you're talking about 15 pounds which can impact impact people's health yeah and I, I think it comes on really fast because like you talked about the college 15 all of a sudden they're away from home they have the the commons the cafeteria that they go to to eat they have everything accessible there they're studying all the time they're maybe going out and partying and drinking more than they did at home too mm -hmm. and when when we tie this to the the college 15, the freshman 15, and we call this the quarantine 15. Um, I think too, we're sedentary, mm -hmm. where I've been working on the computer a lot. And yeah, I've been, I've been watching my Netflix too. You know, that's how I wind down at the end of the day. But when I'm working on my computer during the day, I have found myself reaching for some snacks. So uh, you have to be mindful because all of a sudden it creeps up on you and all of a sudden you've got 15, 15. extra pounds. <laughs> it's like, where did that come from? And in such a very short window of time. Yeah. And, and you know what? You can put it on that fast, but, but it you can't off. <laughs> take it off that fast. It <laughs> doesn't come off like that. So, so true. So true. And if, if you've been wearing your, your comfy clothes, your pajamas every day, and then you went and put on your street clothes or your, your work clothes or your jeans, just your jeans, mm -hmm. and went, oh my, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what we're talking about today is the, everything that you can do related to the quarantine 15. Mm -hmm. Things that you can do to relieve stress, uh, to take care of boredom, eating, all of those things that, all the feelings. Yeah. There's a lot of emotion and feelings yeah. that come yeah, along with Especially with the with pandemic. Us. Like mm -hmm. people are in this place where they, they feel like there's no way to get out of it. You're one day going about your normal life and mm -hmm. then find yourself, you know, under the orders of, our state's regulations and global, you know, lockdowns that you can't right. even go outside of your house. And right. so if you don't have a system already in place for you to de-stress, you're probably going to end up right in front of the television. I personally, I'm so fortunate. I have always been about my health. I've always been conscientious about working out. Um, I have a gym in my house and not just say a treadmill. Like I literally have invested my money in my health. I don't put it in the pharmaceutical industry. I put it in my health. I have a treadmill. Mm -hmm. I have an elliptical. I have a punching bag. I have weights. I have balls. I mean, I have a full workout gym studio. And I nice. think it's because personally, 
I don't want to ever have an excuse that the weather was this or the snow kept us in and I can't work out. I make an intention practically every day. As soon as I wake up, go down to the gym and work out. And even with all of that, I find myself a couple of pounds over. So I could imagine how challenging it is for people right now where we're just having certain states, the quarantine is being lifted as far as moving out and opening up businesses and going out and realizing that, oh my gosh, I am not the same person that I was, you know, two months ago, three months ago. Mm -hmm. And when, when you say you have a gym in your house, you still go to a gym outside a of the house trainer. when I'm one is open and closed. right. He's, he's not available so, for me to work out with. So then you're working out at your house where you've created this, whereas mm -hmm. my gyms were closed too. That's right. So, That's right. And now realize that I'm in Wisconsin and you're in the DC metro area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have some different I've been, you've been, um, confined longer than I have. Yes, yes. We, we still have not been, I, well, I think today was the first day. Today is the 31st that we're actually recording. I think June 1st, it officially mm -hmm. op opens up. You're right, right. So, so you have a lot more freedom than I have. Right, in my gyms, and I say gyms with an S because I go and swim at one gym because they have a saltwater pool that I love. Oh, healthy. And then I go to another gym and that's where my children work out also. Mm -hmm. We have a group fitness program. Mm -hmm. um, I could add the boys on for $15 extra. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I have yeah, my man. gym that is by where I live that I go to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So I have three different places I go, but you have to be able to do stuff at home too. Right, right. You know, and which will, as we go through this PowerPoint slide, I'll have a tip to share with people. That's a gift from me to help you with that challenge. Because there's always a way to work. Always a way. Mm -hmm. So we just want you to know that you are definitely not alone. Correct. And our goal today is to help you make the most of this time. And some of you are coming out of social distancing, well, still social distancing, but you're having more freedom. So when times are uncertain, it's all too easy to want to hibernate and escape what's happening in the world. That can mean extra couch time, extra snacks, and extra calories. So while everyone loves a good TV bench from time to time, we also know the power of moderation. A little couch time coupled with healthy food, workouts, and fun activities can equal a hot happier, more balanced to you. And we hope our tips today help you find balance and calm during these times. Yeah, awareness is the first step. So just having the conversation between us and sharing it with people out there, this mm -hmm. will allow you to like, oh, let me assess where I am. This is like something that I didn't even think about. But now you have so many tips so many aspects of what sherry and i have been going through that you can look at these as like oh so let me use some of these as my next step to get myself back on track yeah. and also sherry and i are both coaches so you know we're here to partner with you mm -hmm. on whatever your objective is long term with your health yeah we're both we're both coaches in the weight loss industry and you know we're willing to admit that we have to make some changes too when things like this happen. You know, I've got to make sure that I'm moving my body. I've got to get up in my house and I've got to move too. Mm -hmm. You know, not just talk the talk and then, right. you know, be done with it. So, exactly. finding balance, feeling stressed over things you don't have any control over. Almost every one of us has felt that way at one point over the past couple of months. So, I put a couple examples here. This could be personal things like your family's health, your job, or some big picture issues like our family members' motorcycles. <laughs> so We've had lots of discussions about that, right? <laughs> yeah, because Sherry can go off on a tangent on her son's crotch rocket, but thankfully he sold it now. And like Beverly thought, well, maybe he did it because he knows how much it bothers his mother, but it's not <laughs> the case. He just wanted the money for something else. So we'll see what he comes up with. So 
my worry about his motorcycle gives me a lot of stress that I can't do much about. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I ask him not to do is I do not want him on his motorcycle on the highways on holiday weekends. Mm -hmm. Too much traffic. And you know the strange thing about that? That's the peak time, especially when the weather's nice, that they show up in droves. There's like, I know. Here we have major celebrations and the motorcycles come from all over. Like, yeah. <laughs> to be a part, there's like rolling thunder. Like, my husband yes. has a motorcycle too. And yes. I have to say, I'm not as, I guess, like you as a mom, you're kind of squeamish about motorcycles. So, I'm not as um, concerned at this point about it because this has been years and years and years that I've gone yeah. through it. And you just, you, you serenity prayer, you have to let it go and not yeah. stress out. But I have to say that when they have these um, events here in the DC metro, area, like a big one is the Rolling Thunder, I think it's like 4th of July mm -hmm. Memorial Day. And it's just like, I've been a part of that. And it's mm -hmm. like, it feels so patriotic. You have people from the youngest of age, like 15, 16 years old, riding their little motorcycles. And then you have the senior veterans and they're, you know, been through all kinds of wars and the flags are mm -hmm. flying and the patriotism. The little kids are standing along the street with their little flags. And the, the numbers of, there's thousands and thousands, like a sea of motorcycles. But mm -hmm. they're kind of in a caravan and they're not zipping through traffic. They're all kind of trotting along at like right. 25, 30 miles an hour. So there's different aspects of this. And like you were saying with this, the version that your son has, those seem to be more at higher speeds and they're kind of in and out of traffic. And I'm not well, saying that, you know, yep. it doesn't See, scare me when I'm driving, but it's just as a mother, this is a concern and you, you just yep. have to pray and let it be. I know, let it go, but I know <laughs> how much of a risk. you still not <laughs> I don't get me wrong. I love motorcycles. I love Harleys. I love being on a motorcycle. I love every, but I know that my son is a risk taker and he zips in and out of traffic and he goes too fast. That's all. We'll just say so, for his safety <laughs> when he's on his motorcycle. So another thing that you don't have control over, of course, is your family's health. And we do the best that we can. Like my dad is 83. So we did not go see him during this whole time. Mm -hmm. So I set, it, set him up on Zoom calls, had to teach him how to do the technology so that, that he awesome. could. I know. And there was a couple of times I called him. I called him and I'm like, Did, didn't you get the link? Well, he can't see the numbers and he misses, he mixes <laughs> up the password. He's like, darn it, I thought it was a six, but it was an eight, or, you know, he's, he can't see. So, anyway. Give him kudos, because I tell you, I get frustrated sometimes trying to get logged on, so, right. three. hey, right. he's a good example, so awesome that you've been able to share that with him. Well, and, you know, some of them haven't been able to go to the doctor, because they, they can't have elective surgeries, you can't get in because of the, the whole pandemic thing. And they I know even this that way now. Yeah, a girlfriend of mine had her her little child, her little daughter um, needed to go in for an appointment. She's got, you know, bronchial type things and wow. they did not want to see her. They did not yeah. want her to bring her in there. And yeah. so the, everything's virtual and, yeah. you know, we just have to and realize. And I think that this is probably going to be the new normal that people are finding ways to not be out in the public even after this is you know subsided mm -hmm. some but just finding alternative ways to have a lot of your appointments without being in such large numbers in places because i'm sure with the social distancing being relaxed there's still not going to be a office of sick people in a doctor's lobby like they're going to have to make adjustments there yeah they well, and they were doing some virtual things before this all happened, mm -hmm. and it was cheaper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't have to spend your deductible um, as much of your deductible. There was ways, I mean, with the, the insurance that we're on, it's called Amwell. It's a virtual yeah. way to see people. So, And I know counseling um, therapies and stuff have switched to that as well. 
Well, true. And look at our industry, like as a health coach, we can work with people all around the world. And this was one of the things that I really was passionate about. I am such a global traveler. I enjoy connecting with people around the world. And mm -hmm. then I have this platform as a health and wellness coach where I can work with women everywhere. Right. right. There's no, you know, division mm -hmm. that you have to be able to see somebody face to face in their brick and mortar location. If you have connectivity, oh. you can set appointments and you can discuss, you know, health objectives for your clients and be connected on a regular basis with accountability. So this is a fantastic opportunity to incorporate social distancing and also re reaching your health goals. Right. And a lot of us health coaches, especially like you and I, would never have met true. if it weren't for the computer. Very true. We were in the same program together and said, hey, let's work together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's so. That's been, it's been so awesome yeah. to connect with you. Yeah, so this has been we wonderful. Have, we have a lot of fun doing yeah, this. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We do. We, so, before the show, we're just chatting. <laughs> how long do we need to start? <laughs> Right. And we talk throughout the week so, and we text like, yeah, we are we're awesome friends. So so great so, for this opportunity. Oh, love it. So one of the things we wanted you to do is focus on actions. When you concentrate on the items that are outside your control, it leaves you in a state of constant reaction. Mm -hmm. Of course, like my son doesn't want to hear me. Um, <laughs> when you're always reacting to things out of your control, you end up feeling stressed and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. All that added stress and that cortisol and everything. Yes, which contributes so, to weight gain. <laughs> especially around Stress the hormone. middle, around, yep, your, yep. around your organs in your middle. Mm -hmm. So focus on your habits and routines because that's so important along with the way you treat others and your actions. Be pro proactive and set intentions to be balanced. And that's the key, so, set your intentions, you know. Yeah, and you know, I try not to worry because it doesn't do any good. Worrying doesn't do any good, no. but it's something that I still have to come to terms with not just with that but other things you know like yeah. making sh kids you know all of that all of that stuff i think we're so, also in a position where this has become a opportunity to deal with the unknown who knew mm -hmm. you know a couple of months ago the world would stop like globally mm -hmm. we all stopped at one time yeah we had no control over it but yes. over the days, weeks, now months, we're coming out of it and we're finding that we have to live life in a intended way that we can't just stop. We have to be conscientious. Um, I actually went out yesterday for most of the day, which is something I haven't done since we've been in quarantine. I think I was out a few times during that period and I was like run an errand and come right back home. So mm -hmm. yesterday, it's like people were in mass numbers. I guess they're like the uh, summer fever. People are out, you know, preparing for um, getting their lawn in order. A lot of supplies are, you know, backlogged and they're trying to get those. And what I saw was there was traffic everywhere because mm -hmm. I, I walked the whole time. And you can see a car every now and then. So it was, the traffic is starting to come back. And this is the thing that really stopped me like you cannot go in a store now without a mask yeah there mm -hmm. are people at the door yeah checking entrance yes. into the door you can buy one at the door too though like Some you can go like we went to home depot there was nothing to buy at the door there was just a oh. security person like it, did you have a mask did you menards you i think menards is selling them at the door for like 83 cents Okay. So they they were selling them okay. for people because they're they're requiring it. So Costco's yeah. requiring them too. You can't go into Costco without it either. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a wild bird. Um, I wanted some hummingbird stuff, mm -hmm. and I couldn't go there either without. It, I was without surprised because I I hadn't realized how widespread it was. It is like everywhere mm -hmm. you look. There's right. nothing but mask. 
Right. It looks like something from a movie. It's so <laughs> surreal. <laughs> they were they were actually tying some some things to episodes from some scenes from some movies. Okay. Back, yeah, it, I don't I don't remember which ones they were, but let's go back to the slides. So your perfect lockdown day. What's your new normal perfect day look like? Well, our brains love routine, and the one of the best ways is to set a daily schedule. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing right away was I'm like, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to get up at five. I'm going to get my work done. I, I like to have my lemon water in the morning. Then I have my coffee. And then Max, my dog, and I go for a walk. Max is going to be 13. And he's kind of like my accountability partner because I'm like, I have to do this for Max. Yeah, he needs to be out. I, I've got to take Max for a walk. He's going to be 13 in July. He needs to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So he's, he really pushed. We don't walk fast because he can't. Mm -hmm. He'll, yeah, 13. He'll yeah. In the, he jumps in the car so we can go to the place that we go on the walking trail. And then when we're done walking, he can hardly get back in the car again. <laughs> Sounds like some people that are in this certain stage of life. <laughs> 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 so anyway, and I have been taking a nap in the afternoon with Max. Okay. So, but I've been getting a lot of work done and that's where I found myself more sedentary, mm -hmm. reaching for a snack as I'm, and just mindlessly eating. Yeah. So, and a lot of people are boredom eating. It depends too. Mm -hmm. And if you have kids at home, if you're trying to do all the things and then you're whatever so yeah how are how's your schedule during all of this well i have to say i'm relatively regimented but when we went into the quarantine in my mind it's like okay i'm going to get a chance to rest <laughs> that was the first thing that came to my mind and mm -hmm. the dc metro area it's a commuting locality so on yeah. average People are in their cars commuting from an hour and a half to three hours, depending on how far you are getting into the city. So mm -hmm. I have three hours that was put back into my schedule and it was like, okay, so I'm going to get some extra rest. And Sherry knows this about me. I am challenged with getting rest. <laughs> I don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, okay, this is going to work. I'm going to get some sleep. So um, I would sleep in till like, I think around nine o'clock and then I would start working. And then I find myself, well, pushing everything to the back end, like, okay, I'm getting my work got done there. I'm gonna get all of my little errands done there. And it's just like, I found myself still up at two and three o'clock in the morning because I didn't get mm -hmm. everything done in the front end like I should have. Yeah. And, then, and this was another thing that really was a light bulb moment for me because I get up every day and I get dressed. Because we were in a much more relaxed, like, schedule i'm like i'm gonna wear my dorm clothes so when i have like days off i have what i call dorm clothes i don't do like the workout clothes if i work out i put workout clothes on but i didn't want to have workout clothes on and just lounging around the house like my mind works like that so i put dorm clothes on this i could chill so i was finding myself days in days out with my dorm clothes on and i was thinking like I was feeling lazy. I feel like I wasn't getting much accomplished. And then I think I must have went like a week and a half, nearly two weeks. And I'm like, I'm done with this. I can't do this. I was talking to other coaches and they were talking about some of the things that they were going through. So what I did was I took my regular schedule from before quarantine and I reworked it to work from home. So I literally put like six o'clock, get up, get in the gym. 6 30 do mm -hmm. you know you're this and you know whatever was on the schedule i think i shared it with you and yeah, then you did. i changed my work day so around 7 30 i'm working so from 7 30 to like 3 34 i'm just working straight to the day mm -hmm. and there's like something that's happening some deadline i'm working even later and then when i shut it down like you have your max your little pooch i have mine and mm -hmm. by the time i shut down i need to grab the leash and take her out to do her yep. walk so yep. then I found like I was staying back on schedule, but also because, you know, there's like so many coaching classes that I have, so many um, 
additional um, research projects that I have going on for the health and wellness, I was doing those later at night. So I'm still getting up earlier, working later at night. So it's just like, I still am lacking sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm getting a lot done. I'm not tired, but that's just not a healthy practice. And I, like I was telling coach, yeah. I need a coach for my sleep. <laughs> yes. See, I, I need more sleep. And, and see, I, another thing is like, I don't do TV either. I don't do TV. And it's just like, I have no idea what's happening in the world until somebody calls me and tells me something. Like right well, now we got this, this, this launch that just happened. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I missed the launch. I only saw that because I was over at a friend's house when that happened. Mm -hmm. I took my friend some rhubarb and the launch was happening at that time they had the TV on. Otherwise, mm -hmm. my TV hasn't been on for a year. Yeah. It's see. collecting dust in the corner. But I do watch my Netflix and I watch it on my phone or on my okay. computer. Okay. And I, I just watch like one, you know, episode, like and if, if I'm if I'm in between things, then I just watch Cheers or something fun. Yeah. Or at the end of the day, just to wind down. It's just yeah. my winding down time. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. So I even down my um the darkness on my computer. Okay. So that I'm not like bright lights. So light. I, I do more of a nighttime light so that I can. Yeah. But otherwise, I I my sleep is essential for me because I'm that's like my number one thing. Mm -hmm. So, and if I don't get enough, then I know that I start getting a sore throat or yes. I start, you know, not feeling my best. So, well, I think one of the things about what you're saying is like, everybody has to know their body. And with my body, I know when I'm fatigued with sleep, I know I should get more, but I'm not, I'm not grouchy. I'm not like drained or lethargic. Like I have mm -hmm. lots of energy. I really have lots of energy. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that I do that really helps me is that even though I don't watch television, I constantly keep the television tuned to a nature channel or a music channel and not watching mm -hmm. nature, not in the wild nature, but it's like the harmonics of nature or the tones right. of nature. Like this is playing and emanating mm -hmm. throughout my house and that's a healing property. So I'm constantly getting this. It goes on in my house 24 seven. I don't turn it off. It's yeah. always going on. I have plants like this in my house. So I have things of nature that are coming in and healing me and renewing me. However, I do realize that I do need the more sleep so it can do more support mm -hmm. of healing my body with a restful night. So, um, yeah, there's everybody, everybody got it. You have to know your body. That's what it comes back to. You have to know your body. I agree with that. Cause everybody's different. I need more sleep than you do. You may yeah. need, I love the whole nature thing though. That's awesome. Oh I yeah. Like I can't imagine sitting in front of a television for two hours watching a movie. I cannot tell you the last time. And, and this is unique to me. Like, it's really odd because when I have conversations with people and they was like, well, did you see this movie? Like, I don't remember the last movie I saw. I think it was like a couple of years ago. I just, I just don't have the time for it. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather be doing something where it's like you want to be proactive in life or you want to be a spectator in life. I am active. So I, I just rarely mm -hmm. will sit. Unless I'm coaching. I love coaching. <laughs> you, I was just going to say, you and I would rather be talking to our clients and working mm -hmm. with right. our clients than right, right. watching a movie but if i'm going to be like with my boyfriend or at my daughter's and they want to sit and watch a movie yeah, i'm going to be right. present with them right so another right. thing that you can do is called box breathing mm -hmm. um, involves controlling both parts of your breath breathing mm -hmm. in and out as well as holding your breath it's called box breathing because you do each part of the breath for an equal amount of time, four counts, like breathing around a square, mm -hmm. okay? So one thing that I do with, I, I, I'm a physical education teacher at a public school district. So one of the things I do with the four-year-old class is we put four birthday candles up in front of us and then we'll breathe in for a four count, go two, three, four, I count and the kids inhale for four and then they hold it 
and then they breathe out for four. And while they do that, they're blowing out the candle. So four, three, two, one. That's a and then they breathe to teach in, children. That's they awesome. hold, and then they breathe out again. And that really helps them. Yeah. So yeah, it calms them down after right. we just had them running and and so it calms them down before they go back to the classroom. Right. And so, also it's a technique that will probably stay with them all of their lives. Yeah, and there's some there's a few other, you know, um breathing techniques that we do, but we you know, and the counting to four, it's great because they're four years old. Mm -hmm. put out four fingers so That's awesome. and i know um you talked about the mantras oh yeah and this is what i do in the morning before i get out of bed i'm um, usually i'm awake before my alarm goes off but i do have them as a backup mm -hmm. um, i will do deep I, I used to take yoga classes and it's been ages since i have taken yoga classes but that was one of the um foundations of the yoga class was breathing techniques and what i do now is like before i get up in the morning i just kind of think about my day and i do deep deep belly breaths so mm -hmm. it clears out like toxic air that's been in your lungs like people do shallow breathing usually so mm -hmm. to intentionally do these deep breaths i do from 10 sometimes i can get up to 25 depending on like what my time is but these deep breaths from your diaphragm like you can see your tummy rise and compress and mm -hmm. deep, and this is really good and waking up the brain and kind of having a thought in mind some people do tones and mantra sounds with them but it is so fantastic to start your day. It's just try mm -hmm. it just before you hit the floor, just take, you know, my suggestion is, you know, around 10 deep breaths. And mm -hmm. then you will feel like awake. You know, sometimes you wake up and you're kind of lethargic and you're tired, you gotta kind of shake it off. You do these 10 mm -hmm. deep breaths, it will help you. It's supposed to help oxygenate your blood, help with the uh, fog in it. Like it's amazing. Like there is a um, class on breathing. I, I can't remember. I was in Costa Rica a long time ago, maybe like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And they had this class teaching us about the breath. So it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's really a thing. I think that people don't realize how shallow they breathe. Mm -hmm. we take a lot of shallow breaths and we yeah. if you just think just of an, this too if you think of an infant laying there and you watch their belly go mm -hmm. up and down mm -hmm. they're taking deep breaths mm -hmm. that's yeah. what you want also mm -hmm. um right. so that's box breathing mm -hmm. so now a couple other at home survival quick tips that we have we as much as possible stick to a schedule our brains and bodies crave routine. Right. Creating a daily schedule will help keep you and your family on track and moving forward. If you have children at home, this is especially critical. Yeah. The kids do better with a root daily routine that is the same every day. Mm -hmm. um, feed your brain with positivity. Stay informed, but avoid getting caught up in the news cycles. Yeah, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> But well, the audio books or the podcasts, yep. uh, I am always listening to something in the background. Um, mm -hmm. When I get dressed in the morning, I kind of set like, okay, what topic in a, in, do I need to cover today? And I'll listen to a, you know, a webinar series while I'm getting dressed mm -hmm. in the morning. And it's just maximizing your day. And in the space of us as health and wellness coaches, like the information in the industry changes from week to week. And you have people who are putting out this information. And if you want to be the best in your field, you need to be tapped into the newest, latest information pertaining to mm -hmm. health and wellness. Right. And you can just Google, you know, like proactivity. Mm -hmm. You know, go to YouTube and do a search for whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm, true. Um, resist the urge to stress eat. When you're bored, worried, or upset, it can be tempting to reach for snacks. How to, how to know if you're stress eating? You want all that comfort in snack foods. You never feel full or satisfied. You're just grabbing for the sake of grabbing. So 
Think about nutrient dense food. How many nutrients are in the food that you're eating? Because it's going to keep your immune system healthy, which is going to help you not get sick also. Correct. So um, if you're feeling the urge to snack, divert your attention, tackle a project or hit a quick workout. You know, I actually found myself getting up from the computer and I had to go upstairs. So I jumped the stairs, like both feet. So I'm like, jump, jump, wow. jump, yeah. jump, right. all the way up. And I get upstairs and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not ready to walk. <laughs> and then I, I see the dog do that. I'm just like, I, <laughs> I will find myself gasping for breath by the time I make it to the top floor. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to get up because I had to, I, it was a bathroom run. And I'm like, oh, okay, what am I going to do? So I'm doing high knee lifts all the way there. And then on the way back, I'm doing butt kicks. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta move it. I got like two hours more on the computer. I'm like, so anyway, so revisit old hobbies or learn something new, you know? And I think you and I talked about this. I'm 53 years old. I'm still learning. There's so and much that baby I still compared learn. to me. <laughs> oh, whatever. I know you are older than I am, but you are young at heart. So I'm truly young at heart. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you you do just fine. You can renovate that old bedroom, you know, make your, you know, change out a room. You, we also talked about how we've been organizing and decluttering yeah. and, you know, all those things around the house that you'd never had time for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now yeah, is the time the to same. do them. Mm -hmm. I, I was tackled so one of my closets and I felt so good about it. I must have had like four bags big garbage yeah. bags of things to donate and now mm -hmm. I can literally see the floor in one of my closets so it made me feel really good and you think back over this you know time frame like what did you do like I have a litany of things that I've accomplished since this period so hopefully you've been able to find something to engage yourself in that it this per this time frame was purposeful for you I think too, one of the issues that we had was we were such a go, go, go busy society before this happened mm -hmm. that when we are all of a sudden at home, we're like, I'm bored. Oh, I never got bored. I never got no, bored. No, but I, I, I had a, how the average person would have gotten bored. I do recognize. Yeah. That. I had a lot of my friends tell me that they're boredom eating. And I'm like, how are you bored? All you did was complain before that you were so busy you had no time for anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the pace. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're calling it bored, but it was, it's just the lifestyle pace mm -hmm. went from here yeah. to here. Right. And we're calling it boredom. And it's really not boredom because they're full of, they're busy all day long. Activity. It's mm -hmm. just activity level mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah. um stay connected via technology if you're feeling isolated use video conferencing software mm -hmm. like zoom mm -hmm. we're actually using zoom for this or social media tools like facebook groups facebook live to connect with friends co-workers and loved ones for school for education purposes because we're also doing virtual lessons mm -hmm. we're using google meets mm -hmm. So that's another platform that people use. Yeah, there's several ones. I know we also use like Microsoft Teams for um, sharing documents and having um, mm -hmm. meetings that are a lot more secure than some people have said Zoom can be with certain, you know, materials. Right. So there's a myriad of different platforms. So Beverly has her home workout ebook for you. Yeah, so we've been talking about working out and for those who are still finding themselves in quarantine or just don't want to go out and be amongst the number of people in the gyms, there are home workouts that you can do and be really effective. And my gift to you is a free downloadable ebook. It's several pages of content on working out at home. Um, you can start from very basic and add layers to it to make it much more comprehensive as sherry was just saying you know she was hopping up the stairs at home and you know mm -hmm. that can be very challenging for you so just download this and get some tips and strategies and start slow you know just start the movement that's the main thing it's like in mm -hmm. order to reverse 
the weight gain, you're going to have to get activity into your day-to-day -day routine. And I think if you're looking at walking, the minimum it should be like 10,000 steps a day. So get your pedometer mm -hmm. track how much movement you're getting in. And I know there's a lot of apps you can download for that as well, but just start simply, you know, download this and just, you know, I'll do this goal for this week and add another one for the next week. And hey, I would love to hear how it's going for you. So check back with me and let me know what's happening. Right. And and if you can't get down on the ground and do a push up or do Superman, you know, on your stomach, you can do a counter push up. You can lean yeah, against you there's, on that, didn't you? There's, I did, yep, on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. So there's modifications that you can do. And if you're not sure what a modification is for a certain exercise, there's all kinds of YouTube videos out there too that you can just Google that. Uh, but, you know, you can always get a hold of Beverly and I, and we will walk you through it as well. Absolutely. We will help you with that. So questions and answers, other things that you can do. If you have any questions and answers, feel free to contact us, but you can make your home a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Beverly has her weight room in the basement. Now the gyms are closed. She has it all set up already, her exercise balls and weights. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about decluttering, organizing, arranging, mm -hmm. other things that you can do, fun and games. You can make the Play-Doh. Yeah. You can make crafts. You can use up some of those um, plastic, food dishes or whatever that you yeah, have, take out. Use, use those, mm -hmm. right? Read a book that you haven't had time for. I have, a, I have such a list of books that, and I've ordered a few more. So. Mm -hmm. I have too, since we've been quarantined. Yep. I cracked them open a couple of yep. times, read a page or two. I'm gonna go back to them and I literally have two sitting right in front of me that I just need to get back I know, to. I just have to take, take the time to do that. I need right. to, Blocking time is what works for me. Mm -hmm. I have to have a larger block of time to like four hours to really work on something. Mm -hmm. um, now is the time to take some virtual classes, online classes. Some of the education um, institutions are offering oh, yeah, some pretty true. good deals. Harvard's got classes. You know, you see California Systems has classes. I've actually looked at a couple of them for health and wellness. So yeah, there are classes available on practically any subject now. So right. take advantage of that. And you and I are always, that's my um, my go-to is I'm like a hoarder of online classes. So moving your body, I know even my, the yoga studio was offering online yoga classes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and touring um, sites virtually, the museums and all of these places that you can go to and look at their sites and see historically what's what they have to offer so there's all kinds of things that you can do mm -hmm. so um one thing one last thing was what habits have you started while you're at home do you want to continue once we get out of the whole um, pandemic thing. And I think one of the things that I want to do is just continue to keep getting up at five or six o'clock in the morning and keep this schedule going. And um, of course, walking max. But there's a few things that have good that have come out of having some of the social distancing as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's all negative. I talked to a few people and they said, yep, it's really eye opening. And yeah. they've, they've made some changes in their lives for the better because of this. this time. Yeah. Uh, I would say for myself, I, I truly appreciate the connection with you and us having a conversation and the commitment to have these conversations regularly to help people who are at the beginning stages of embracing a new lifestyle where they're going mm -hmm. to be your will and to lose weight. So that's been amazing and such a dynamic change in my lifestyle because I don't see where I would have had the scope to do this with my previous schedule. So right. this information can be, mm -hmm. you know, so broad in scope global that it can touch people, you know, everywhere that's 
looking to just what is the first step that I undertake if I want to lose some weight, if I'm a woman and I'm in a certain stage of life, like how do I start this process? Some people, you know, are just lost in the steps. So here, like mm -hmm. we with information every week, practically on different topics, just basic information, mm -hmm. get started. Yeah, and if, if you don't know where to start and you want the information step by step for you on what to follow and what to do, get a hold of Beverly or I and we will help you. Yes, absolutely. So we have you, our information up on the screen right now. Um, you, I'm Sherry, Sherry Lynn Inc. I have my Instagram and my Facebook on the screen and Beverly Heals Health and Wellness Coaching, Stepping Into Dazzling Health. Absolutely. And she, she has her website and her Facebook and Instagram on there also. And feel free to contact us. Yeah. That's what we are here for. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I love helping people at the initial stages. Um, me personally, I found that I was traveling a lot and it was always challenging to like, okay, so where do I start from this place? And as my life changes, the stages of what I need changes. So mm -hmm. one of the things that you and I had talked about is like, how do we reach people beyond just having this conversation? And we mm -hmm. talked about having one day a month where we just open the platform up for people to call in with questions or was it do the comments and mm -hmm. send the questions in so we're going to have um facebook live every month with just sherry and i answering questions that you might have pertaining to how do i get started on this weight loss process how do i get healthier how do i be a well person so look forward to that i know our first kickoff is happening june 28th i think it is yep the, the, the fourth, yeah. fourth sunday in june Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, we, can, we can have that set up for people to um, register or sign up for the um, question and answer. Or if there is a topic that you would like us to discuss mm -hmm. on our weekly episode, just let us know yeah, and we will we'll do it for you. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, thank you for being with us. Again, I'm Sherry and this is Beverly and we are committed to your health. Absolutely. Step into right. dancing help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye.